Okay guys, hi, uh, Phil Pulley here uh, with my multimodal teacher education autobiography for TCH 563 in the summer of 2013, taking a look at where I got my teacher education training. Okay, I actually started down at SIU in Carbondale at Southern Illinois University. It's the state's second teacher college founded in 1869. I'm actually from Southern Illinois and it's where my first degree is from in radio and television. Uh, my second bachelor's degree, which this was, was in social sciences education. Um, in between those two, a couple things, uh, a couple years in the army, mostly in Germany. And after finishing my first degree, uh, a couple years in Puerto Rico teaching radio production. But I had a few problems down there and ended up transferring to uh, Illinois State University um, in January of 1991. Um, scheduling was easier. Back then they had the star system where you could actually use the phone and register, which was so cool compared to having to go in and make an appointment to see an advisor to add a class. And then them telling you, is Tuesday good? Uh, you mean a week from tomorrow? Uh, not so good. Okay, um, in fact, a friend of mine was going to school here, had talked to an advisor, and they actually had planned out a schedule for me before I even was actually admitted. So that made the switch pretty easy. Um, my field experiences uh, as a teacher candidate, um, down at Southern before I transferred to McApeer, I, I did observations in classrooms for, you know, ed side classes in Carbondale and Carterville, where I'm actually from. Uh, once I got up here in Bloomington Normal, of course, in Bloomington and Normal School Districts. Um, my 216 experience was, of course, at University High School, um, where I did a, ended up being a four-day unit on the decline versus the fall of the Roman Empire, uh, with a teacher now who's now retired. Uh, and then, I, of course, I did my student teaching at Decatur Eisenhower with Dr. Paul. Uh, he had his uh, PhD in geography. Uh, I taught world history and geography. Uh, including a rivers project he was piloting for a curriculum. So, great time down there. Um, theoretical framework during my classwork, I gotta say, uh, mostly we talked about things, you know, involving doing and its progressive ideas were discussed. And this represents that sort of cognitive approach of moral development and active thinking. In fact, I've still got my uh, John Dewey Experience in Education book here with me. Um, and we also talked about uh, Piaget uh, and, of course, his stages of development, the cognitive stages, the pre-moral, uh, conventional, autonomous stages of uh, development, which have been sort of tweaked since then. But, um, you know, sort of those children go through stages, the difference is now we're saying not all at the same time. Okay. In retrospect, however, I'd just say there's probably perhaps more of a behavioralist f because there's this big focus on procedures and these steps and this very set lesson plan formula and this very strict lesson plan control and these are the steps you have to follow and this is the way you have to do things and while you had some autonomy within the lesson itself, very structured in the way you did things, uh, reminded me very much of sort of a Skinner approach where if we do these things a certain way, we'll get these certain results, sort of a very behavioralist kind of point of view in my opinion. But the degree of my preparation, uh, this is 20 years ago or so, so again, mostly I thought procedural, okay? Only my university supervisor and Dr. Paul at Decatur Eisenhower really pushed me to go deeper, okay? That's the information, that's good, you're making the connections, but make them make the connections and work to make them do that kind of stuff. That's something I'm working on ever since. Uh, and as Darlene Hemming says uh, in our book, you know, many teacher education programs have been criticized for being overly theoretical, having little connection to practice and offering fragmented and incoherent courses and lacking in a clear shared conception of teaching among faculty. And I gotta say, outside of having that strict lesson plan, that's a lot how I felt when I went through that program, you know, over 20 years ago now. Um, what they say we need to do now is this idea of immersing teachers in the materials of practice and working on particular concepts using those materials. So taking theory basically and you know working that into actual practice because that has the potential to be particularly powerful for teachers learning okay strengths of the program at the time well i'm going to tell you uh lesson planning okay i can learn great planning skills and how to plan out not just lessons but also units uh, i got good researching skills uh, a good amount of pre-service observation although i think maybe a little bit too much was relied on at the lab schools which i think present a different uh, concept of teaching versus what might be going on uh, in terms of demands on teachers in public schools. Um, the technology was appropriate for the time, we talking about overheads back then, uh, but there were some big changes on the horizon and we didn't get anything about, hey, watch for these things coming in the future. Okay, weaknesses, okay. 
to me, a bit too procedural. Okay, some teachers gave too little feedback. Yeah, you turn it in, yeah, a couple little notes, looks good, okay, here's your points. Um, however, then there are some teachers who seem to be a little too focused on the format. Uh, this doesn't fit exactly the structure uh, versus what the content was. Uh, in fact, I had one guy famous for, your staple on your lesson plan has to be an exact 45 degree angle. Okay, suggestions that I have, and these are suggestions again going back uh, 20 years. And so I'm going to focus more on suggestions I think may be, need to be done more for the current time period, which is technology integration. Okay, um, pre service teachers often experience a disconnect between the technology training and their other education classes. Like you might get a class on teacher education technology, but little of that in their actual coursework in terms of doing projects like this one. So I like this project a lot and I hope to see that that's being done at the undergraduate level as well. They need more hands-on experience uh, in creating student-centered technology-rich lessons throughout their program. Uh, I, for one, am flipping my classes, uh, but this is something I've done on my own. Obviously, that wasn't around as an idea, concept back when I was in school, but even now in professional development, it's hard to get the training from someone to do that. It's something you have almost have to do on your own, sadly, okay? And again, this idea of more experiences, it's more likely that PSTs or pre-service teachers will be comfortable using technology to facilitate learning, okay? And so hoping these might be some suggestions uh, from some of the teachers I, I know actually teaching classes, I think is kind of going that way, and I hope so. Uh, and that's what I've got for you. Uh, references here, of course. Uh, any questions for me, please let me know. This is kind of short, but that's all it needs to really be. Thanks.